guess gonna be called episode four. So this story here is on our twin turbo kit for the Ford Ranger Raptor. When I say twin turbo kit, it is a big bolt-on kit. We're going to be bringing it out next year so you can buy it, fit it up, take it to one of our uni chip agents or even bring your car here and do it all in-house. So this is gonna take you through the build process. So if you've watched our episodes on the intercooler, the exhaust system, the dump pipes, all of that sort of stuff, it's all sort of leading to this point for this build behind me and how much power we end up producing out of it and how good these little three litre V6s are. So I'll try to be as thorough as I can from sort of start to finish. It was a bit of a process. It did take about 12 weeks of R&D and that's changing, rejigging, moving, the whole lot. So I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, make sure that you comment. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. We'll get stuck into it, start to finish, twin turbo kit, Ford Ranger Raptor. Hope you enjoy. Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary folks, and we're working out what we're going to do with the bigger intercooler. Isn't that right, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. It's like quick, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing auxiliary injectors. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm just thinking ahead for the 1,000 horsepower version. Because, you know, 600 won't be enough. And then 700 won't be enough. So I'm a mind reader. So what would it be in total? About 150 mil. That's what we're doing. Yep. So I've got to draw it. Yep. And we'll get production, proper production money. Oh, well, we'll jump to that bit of Rob scanning this right now. What's with your dots? That's my dots. Yeah. Oh, there's some markers for my scanner. So it knows where it is in space. Uh, guess what that is? That's the end tank. Rob has just printed the new one before we send it off to get manufactured. Uh, Rob is on the phone actually doing some tech support teaching people how to use the unit here. But I thought I'd sneak at the back here and just show you our Raptor Ranger because uh, some pretty cool's happening here. You wanna have a look? I'll, uh, I'll swing the camera around for you. Here you go. For everyone wondering, the exhaust looks like on a Raptor. I'm straight out of the head here. So it's exhaust manifold built in. There it is. That's where our turbocharger is going to go. Turbocharger over on the bench. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see it is actually pretty small. You know what? I'm going to go find Robbie. How come it's white? That's Andy Glass spray. 3D scanning. Got the glare. Much nicer. Oh wow. Figure. How good is that? Picture. Yeah. So where are we at with it? I noticed a couple of things. One, the exhaust manifold looks like it's built into the head. Yeah, there is no exhaust manifold. It's just the single port. So obviously V6, three cylinders come out into one port. So there's no exhaust manifold as such. The turbo just bolts straight to the head. So now I'm having to go from this flange to this flange. Oh, how good. I'm busy just uh, drawing that up at the moment so I can get some laser cut straight away and should be a fairly straight, yeah, no, uh, just a little adapter, no manifold required. Yeah, good. Might be half easy for <laughs> a change. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't know which half's going to be easy, but. <laughs> <laughs> How much larger is the carrot? Uh, it's reasonable. I haven't uh, had a good measure, but just eyeballing it, it is quite a... Quite a fair bit bigger. In front of the Raptor Ranger with a new big turbo kit. So I'm gonna throw the camera around in just one sec and show you exactly where the new turbos sit. Now we do need to manufacture the dump pops as well. So we haven't got out to that bit yet. He's, we've just got the flanges in, just tacked it all up to have a bit of a look and a bit of a sneak peek at how these new turbos are gonna fit on our Raptor. Have a look. So driver side turbocharger, you can have a look here. You come down. Hey mate! Time has come. For oh, maybe a startup. Oh. See if we've got any leaks before I finish putting all the the rest of the intercooler ducts on. I can't see Especially the oil one on the head. I'll go the other side. Hey guys, 
I thought while it's up in the air, I'd take a quick sort of, I guess, walk around of what it actually looks like uh, from underneath. So you can see our dump pipes, our intake pipes with the wheel off, give you a really good idea. So flip the camera around, have a key. See so all the new uh, intercooler piping or intake piping going to the turbocharger, the discharge pipe there. You can see our dump pipe comes down and then uh, coupled up. There we go. The rest of our exhaust system there. So this one here doesn't actually have the rest of the mufflers on it. It only goes out the back. But then, look on this side, there's a the turbocharger. Uh, can you see the air intake pipe? You see the blower valve with the large pipe work here. Obviously, that is the turbo smart blower valve that we've used there. All the way down to the larger turbo. So you'll notice that we've kept the factory airbox. It's because we're still waiting on the AFE one from the guys in the States to send it over here so we can fit it up because that is obviously going to be part of our uh, Ford Raptor twin turbo kit as well. So we're just waiting on the intercooler, which have arrived. I mean, it doesn't look really that big from the front. Let's just have a look how thick that is. Hang on a sec. Let me show you our one versus factory thickness. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly point out our auxiliary fuel system for the Raptor. It's got one blow off valve here, which is your Turbo Smart replacement blow off valve. And we've got the Turbo Smart race port blow off valve down here. Twin blow off valves, got the AFE cold air intake, and we're working on the current adapter to go to both turbos. In um, you know, manufacturing intake pipes and things like that, how much bigger were these ones that you came up with over standard? Was there a particular reason why you went about it doing it the way that you have? Well, obviously the factory intake pipes wouldn't fit with the new turbos. The inlets on the new turbos are a lot bigger. The position's slightly different spot. So the factory piping won't fit it. So I had to um, make some new pipes to make it fit the even the standard intake system, well, air cleaner. And then we went to the aftermarket air cleaner. Are they larger diameter? Yeah, so they're three inch versus, I think the standard intakes are like, they taper down to two inch. Okay. Um, so they're quite small, the factory turbos. <laughs> what do you got there? Oh, I just three printed some rubber isolators for the um, Ford Raptor air cleaner that we're making fit. Yeah, so this isn't for the Raptor, is it, this box? Nah, this is like a, I don't know, F-250 or some Ford truck that you happen to have in stock from your uh, AFE stock. So uh, this is the closest one that looks like it's gonna fit, so we probably 3D printed that intake. Yep. You may be seen, so now I'm just doing these uh, rubber isolators so I can uh, make some brackets and mount it up. So you printed rubber? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, it's almost like a silicon, it's called TPU. So it's, um, you know, got some, uh, Movement to it, you know, it's flexible. Yeah, right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So the intake ducts. So we know that, so we already yes. know that we've got the airbox there. Yes. The intake ducts, what were you trying to achieve from that particular well, design? Make that airbox fit and also try and get some sort of even flow from left to right. Um, whereas a factory one is basically spuds off at a 90 degree angle. Like one goes across to the other turbo and the turbo on the driver's side just comes off the pipe at 90. Not really ideal for flow, so that was the idea, having the two separate, the two in the one, which are you know, a bit nicer merge and a flow characteristics. And as far as uh, oil um, supply and drain from the aftermarket turbos you fitted, is that in relative the same spot or any uh, issues or dramas or? Well, a lot of custom fittings, like all the factory stuff's all metal hard lines and uh, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of custom fittings involved so, um, for oil and oil and water and oil drains and yeah, quite a lot of custom 
stuff to fit the block. Like the block doesn't have you know, a normal tapered thread or a flange type with all these funny O-ring fittings. So everything's unique to that vehicle. So yeah, start from scratch. I noticed that there were um, some auxiliary fuel injectors like what we do on the Kia Stinger and the Y62 patrols. Yes. Look. Yeah, so we're having to do that a lot with these um, direct injection engines. Obviously when we start pushing the, the horsepower numbers, the fuel delivery, the fuel flow is limited with the factory injectors. Um, so that's how we get around that, is by fitting normal injectors, standard injectors and intake pipes, and then we take full control of that with the unit chip. Have a look. This is on the Dino Innovations chassis dyno, 434.8 kilowatts, 717 newton meters of torque. There you go. So this whole build to get to that one single power run so we could show you exactly how much power this thing produced. So it's 434 kilowatts at the rear wheels and he's producing torque, 717 newton meters. 10 speed auto, 35 inch tires, 580 horsepower at the wheels. This is gonna be a fun car to just belt around in off the road in legal conditions. Mm. Yeah, definitely yeah. don't wanna be driving this thing on the road given a hard time. Thought I'd just rush over and say, Richo, what do you think about it all? Absolute weapon, mate. And I don't think the dyno, uh, the dyno doesn't really do it justice for how it feels on the road. Uh, it's a completely different car on the road. It's super impressive. Um, we already thought they were very quick uh, without our turbo kit on them, um, but this just takes it to a whole new level. I, um, I cannot express enough how amazing this kit is and why you should do it. So there you go, from Richo, the man himself, the bloke who tuned this one up. And uh, you, you can see obviously all the work that, and development that's gone into all the pipe work here, you've given the airbox to fit, the whole lot. So to have that outcome, 434 kilowatts, we're pretty happy about it. In fact, we'll flick it to horsepower. So we can have a look just to fill the yanks in on what we've done over here on our little island. Yeah, for everyone in freedom units or horsepower, uh, came in with 288 horsepower at the wheels and now it's left with 583 horsepower, just under that 600 horsepower mark. That's pretty incredible in, um, in a ute. I mean, really, how much fun is this thing gonna be? About what can be achieved, you know, with some simple mods, I guess. If you think it's simple or not, there's a fair amount involved. This is coming out as a bolt-on kit. So everything that we've developed can be replicated and then fitted up by your local uh, Unichip tuner. Um, they'll be able to buy the kit off us. You'll be able to buy the kit online, you know, and do it yourself as well. That is 100% coming in 2024. All right, thanks for watching part one of the Ranger Raptor twin turbo kit. I do have part two coming out. We've got some more interesting products coming. And uh, obviously you're gonna have to hit that subscribe button so you can follow all of our build and everything that we're doing on this beast here. And then you can book it in and you can actually buy the products. How good is that? It's crazy. Anyway, watch this nonsense that I put at the end of the video. It's in the Downing Long Rangers. It's for the TV show Rides Down Under Workshop Wars. They'll be airing in 2024. It's a little bit nice, a bit different. Cheers for watching. Remember, part two coming soon. Peace. G'day guys, we are filming our big Ranger Raptor turbo kit for Rides Down Under Workshop Wars, airing on Channel 7, mate, in 2024, this episode. So it's going to be a summer episode 24. We're taking this around the Dandenong Rangers right now. Going to give a road test, going to chat about it, everything that was involved in building this kit. So it will be on Channel 7, mate, in 24. Uh, I will have a YouTube video up again very soon. It's um, not as good as TV production because mainly it's me on my phone talking to the camera like this, but it will give you an idea.